This is going to be automation versus video. So launching Bitwig 1.07. Uh, so a newer version than a lot of the videos you've seen online. And yes, this is the full version. And yes, I've been sitting with it a while. It's crazy when people get something and they try to review it or they review a demo version and try to compare it against something. You don't have the everything you need to do that type of video. Anyway, Bitwig stuff is loading up right now. Uh, sound banks, plugins, whatnot, launching FL Studio. Um, by the time you see this video, it should be more just versus in general videos, but this is an automation only video. And I think um, I pretty much know FL and Bitwig now are the most powerful in automation on the market, period. Um, so trying to not teach you guys bad habits and not putting anybody else down, but a lot of the stuff out there is just really misrepresenting the programs um so trying to teach you good habits you should always work out of patcher and fl studio um and so loading up a plugin here in patcher um it's gonna route up just making my bar 16 um Gonna drag this out, maybe change to a better sound. Open in the editor. And where oh where do we start? Okay. I can't just go ham with everything. I'm trying to keep the video sh in the short and sweet, but I need to show you guys what's up. So um Maybe a reason you would work out of Patcher is you have your surface here and you can say add a knob, a slider, or I personally like the XY controller. Um, and we're just gonna activate the X and the Y on that and um, go back to map mode. And then here on Gladiator, right clicking, go into inputs and we're gonna say um, parameters. I'm gonna control say my filter cutoff and my filter resonance and so x to one y to the other and pretty cool pretty cool um, another thing you can do here in FL is you can add a dashboard in here I personally wouldn't add a dashboard here um, because you don't have your presets here um, it's not that hard to uh, go ahead and create just adding a control so add a wheel add, you have all these different things you can add and then uh, once you add what you want just lock it and now this wheel can control whatever you want inside of here or anywhere else in FL Studio that that is a major major difference whatever is in FL Studio can control anything else in FL Studio. Um, but I would, if you wanted to use a dashboard, just add it normally, like in your channels. Um, so you can go here to presets and then I always get either a fat boy or just get the wheels, which is like uh, 16 knobs. And, and like I said, these can control anything so if I wanted um, say to control the cutoff and resonance here I just go to my multi-link controllers click that move my um, cutoff move my resonance and then unclick my controller and now it's asking me what do I want to control it so I can assign any of those wheels um, so I guess I'll just do wheel one for cutoff and wheel two for um, resonance and FL Studio has dope things like formula controller you can come over here load up a peak controller you can load up a formula controller you can load up um, a control surface so this is like the one that kind of automatically pops up in patcher but you can have just one of those to control whatever you want out here 
Um, you have a keyboard controller. So assign, you can assign different notes um, on your keyboard and whatnot, or program in whatever to make certain changes happen. Um, I don't think uh, Bitwig has anything like that. I don't think any other DAW really has something like that. Or for that matter, um, a formula controller. And what this thing is, you can program math formulas and things if you're mad nerdy and smart and know how to do like pi times two over you. But I mostly just go through the presets and pick out something. And you can see what it does is it basically creates different shapes. So you can go here and just like get a basic sine wave and you can have this sine wave, you can slow it down, speed it up, yada yada. You can have this controlling, say, that wheel one that is controlling the cutoff inside of your synth. So just link into controller. I want the the peak of the excuse me. I want the out of the formula controller to control that wheel one. So now that wheel one is um you know link to that controlling your cutoff now this is where it gets interesting you can you can have formula controllers controlling other formula controllers and the knobs and parameters inside of different formula controllers and have your formula controllers controlling your peak controller and what your peak controller is um, if I'll just demonstrate that real quick Peak controller. I'll just uh, throw on say track one, which is um, where my drums are coming in, and whoop, make that none, and just like put eight steps in for my drums, and uh, it automatically mutes it if you wanted to hear it. hear it if you want and uh, what that does is the volume coming in is now able to control something you want so if you wanted it to control the resonance um, assign it to that wheel too and then um, link it and here is, is another interesting part of the power of FL Studios automation is when you're mapping you can say reverse or inverted and this little graph here kind of shows you what it's doing and you have all these different things and um, stepping down and stepping up and you know uh, yada yada but keeping it simple just default what did I do there will 2 uh, I signed will 2 to will 2 like an idiot sign will 2 to um, the peak controller output you can see now it's jumping and um, you can tweak the peak controller to behave in all kind of different ways and the peak controller also just has a built-in LFO here um, and yeah, I'm kind of not going to get into like other types of LFOs and things. But besides that, um, like I said, you can have um, you can have dashboards in here along with your XY controller and stuff. Or you can have your formula controller also controlling this XY knob by assigning that to your peak controller, your formula controller, um, whatever you want. Um, and uh, you know here you can you can stack multiple instruments on top of each other. We're only doing filt um, cutoff and resonance right now. We could be controlling absolutely everything in here if we wanted to. Um, besides that, um, 
in here you also could load up formula controllers and um, what you call it um, peak controllers any effect you want um, and that level of stacking formula controller on top of formula controller on top of um, peak controller um, and then your formula controllers controlling the different knobs and parameters in your peak controller and then your peak controller controlling the different knobs and things in your formula controller and then your formula controller controlling your wheels however you want and then your wheels could be assigned to control the XY pad or the different knobs and things you want to have in here controlling different things in here it it can go on and on and on and um like once you route out now it's just going to the master i can make this route out to um i know it's going to my auto gun channel but we can just make it whatever we want route to six for example and um if you had different things in here they could be going to different outs or uh, all to the same summing to the same channel um, you could have all of this stuff running through whatever effects you want before going out and then once it's dumping out into your mixer of course then you can add whatever effects you want I would suggest you still keep up the good work habits and put it back in a patcher so you just <laughs> so whatever you want to add on top you now have all this you know infinite amount of whatever your computer can handle of just plug in on top of plug in on top of plug in that you can automate again with either your same controllers or more controllers in here and different XY controllers in this patcher and route that how you want it um, instead of you know having one effect take up each one of your slots you're only gonna get to be able to put eight effects in here and you know I saw a guy on on YouTube saying the, re the reason he left FL studio is because it only had 99 um, mixer channels and he would run out of space you know I've never built a song that big but he just had terrible workflow he did not use patchers because if he did he could have multiple cents and you can control your volume of your different things right in here and so this is like a mini mixer and you can sum your effects and thing you wouldn't run out of 99 mixer channels he just had terrible workflow and he didn't um make presets and so after you do this and you set up but it, no you could save a preset every time you know so if ever in a future song you wanted to have xy controllers and all this crazy automation doing stuff you save it here in patcher you can save your presets all right these channel strips over here if you have um patcher and different things going to different things and you could have a vocal whatever you can save this entire strip right here you can save that and then of course beyond saving your patcher and your channel strips you can just make entire templates and save entire templates that load up how you want like when I launched FL it launched what I wanted with certain things already routed to the the mixer so I don't have to do that every time you can already have your mixer channels named and all that so you can pretty much get the gist of how powerful FL can be but Bitwig on the other hand is a beast in itself um, so here over in Bitwig, just gonna try to quickly um, get some drums in here. And like I said, this is the full version, so I'm not a um, limited. Okay, changing the tempo to the same it was in FL. And um, I'm just going to get some drums out here. I'm going to um, loop this real quick. Um, and I should save this for the, the Bitwig video, but any sounds you have in your library, any song, 
it'll play that mp3 that that file that wave at the tempo your song is at and that's insanely crazy i wasn't expecting that and i haven't seen any video online say that everything in your browser no matter what cd you sampled it from will sync to your current project's tempo just by previewing it in in the, in the browser that's insane but anyway um getting the instrument track in here and um there's a couple of ways to load up instruments. I, I seen a guy say that, like this is the only way to click the plus, um, but of course you also can do it from over here in, in your browser if you just go to um, containers or instruments, whatever. Um, so I kind of like this because it, it 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 gets you what you need quicker. All right, if if you wanted to load up um say a container here and you always should do this just trust me I, I see people messing up and they say oh i want a polysynth so let me go click on polysynth and throw no terrible you do not want to do that ever what you want if you want a polysynth you you go to a different instrument you can go to instrument layer you can go to xy instrument and then you can stack things on top of things but like i'm, I'm trying to explain here um you go here and you go to the plus and then you add polysynth and why you do that is because now when you click this over here these macro knobs can control anything in um in your your synth so you can have your lfo that's built into the synth controlling certain things but then you can have these macro knobs controlling things on top of that um are controlling the lfos themselves and then you can um, add effects um, to them, a delay on it. Probably could get some sounds in here real quick. Um, squiggly quick. Who cares what the notes are? Just get them out there, man. Um, Drawing some bar length notes. Trying to draw some bar length notes. Guess it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, at the same time, it can't just sound terrible. like I was explaining um, you can then add your effects on here and um, have these controlling everything in here so this knob can control your mix amount and say the feedback on the right side of the delay and it can control um, the sync a little bit um, the oscillator fm and the resonance maybe then this other knob can control the frequency and the sync of the second oscillator and maybe the sub of that and also controlling say the width of your delay and you know and why, oh, I kind of forgot to mention this, um, why use the browser over here? It helps you get to certain little things faster. Like I said, if you wanted to do it over here, you get your, your instrument layer, or your XY instrument layer, and you can expand this and then go to your different things. And I haven't even seen people using these yet and they're dope um it's kind of like the racks and um in ableton but yeah here on the your browser you can just pick what you want first um and just drag that in so say a dubstep layer base and then if you don't like that you can of course switch through it and
and these macro knobs are dope they're the business um so those are, are good presets there's not that many of them though so i think that's one of the first things bitwork should do and one of the updates or relaunches is have a, a, a lot more presets like those so it's like up to par with ableton and, and other things um and what you can do um to get crazy with it right i like to start with an xy instrument and then here in this xy instrument i um you can go pre or post and then click the new plus sign that pops up and then you can add a instrument layer and then you can click effects and then add in this new plus um an xy effect container and it's like well, what are you doing what are you doing i'm trying to show you the power of the automation and so now in that xy effect go to post and then add in now that polysynth right so what you can have going on is the built-in effect over here you can have the lfo control now what i want is to control i want you guys to hear it so i'll put a little on the frequency change it to beat slow it down um and then say have this first macro from the xy or no excuse me have my x parameter control my pitch my sync i'm just going to try to do this really fast um some of the sub have my y control the shape a lot of the sub some sync in the second oscillator and all of the um oscillator fm um then here in my bfx slot i'm going to add say a delay and um have the y control the mix of the delay and then have x control the feedback of the delays and then i'm going to have um this first macro knob control x and the second macro knob control y and then in my a slot I'm gonna say grab um, a chorus and then have X control the mix of the chorus, Y control the width of the chorus in reverse, and um, also have this macro knob control the time, this macro knob control the rate of the chorus, and then We're going to have and now here in this um, second instrument layer, we can add even more things to be controlled by these macro knobs, right? trying to save time then after you set up all of that right you can have your main xy instrument um container control anything else in any of these you know diving down through the levels but just kind of keeping it simple let's just say x controls this first macro knob in this one and this first macro knob here, Y controls this macro knob, and this second macro knob, and then maybe just for kicks, like the pitch kind of, or the frequency also, so it's like double modulation on the frequency now. And then these XY controllers, um, this macro knob controls Y, and this macro knob controls X, and then this macro knob also controlling say something else you put inside of your C container here um, like I don't know distortion 
So, <laughs> yeah, you know, in reverse, you know, and then you, and then you're with too. So now, whoop, launching maps. Don't want to do that. Terrible sounding, I know. And then on top of that, you can um, say, you can record this in. Uh, it's going to sound terrible, but you just um, go to the little overwrite thing here um, and start playing. And whatever you move, it's going to write that in. And then um, you also can right click and go to automation lane for both of these. Um, add automation lane after you right click and then just hit this little three bar thing and you can say macro one you know you can go do that go up go down you know what i mean you can spend all the time you want on this to make it right and you can switch to your your macro two or if you want to see both at the same time you hit the plus and then you can switch this top one to macro two and then program that in whatever fanciness you want and uh so the amount is crazy and you can you can just kind of keep on going and keep on you know adding what you think would make it sound dope um i think for me and how my head works it's like once i was get so much going i kind of would lose track of what i'm doing unless i'm really trying to focus and remember or i'm not trying to do that much automation i think in fl studio i can just keep my head wrapped around what's going on a little easier just because of how it looks or maybe it's because I've, I've worked with FL Studio more. Maybe FL would confuse some people more. So it depends on what you like. Um, yeah, and, and don't forget um, your, your different containers have presets in them that sound pretty effing dope, man. So getting rid of that terribleness I just did and... Uh, Say going to XY instrument layer. Oh, this one only has two. Yeah, it's dopeness though. And I'm really, I don't know which one has better um, automation, to be honest with you. Um, Right, not even showing in, in damn FL Studio. Of course, of course, you can um, write it out in the lanes or draw it in. Or of course, you can record in your automations, hitting record, and then wiggling knobs on your controller with your mouse or right clicking and um, saying create automation lane for whatever parameter you want. And then here over in song mode, you're gonna have your clip that you know you draw in your automation do whatever you want yada yada so you know this kind of automation works better say you're building up for a drop or your drums are going to come in and you want that timed perfectly you would use things like this to help you get that right on time or whatever but then for just crazy evolving sounds and weirdness you would use um the formula controllers and the peak controllers um, and in Bitwig, you would use your LFOs for crazy automation and soundscaping. And then you would draw in your automation here for um, timing with certain drops and things like that. So I hope this kind of helped people see the power of FL Studio and Bitwig. Automation, at least. That's my video. Doses.